crafty friends, it's Caroline and I am back today with week 13 of Sandy's 13 Frights Before Halloween 2022. This has been an epic collab hosted by the amazing Sandy Trefker over at Sandy Trefker Creative Designs. There are 11 total contributors, including Sandy, and we have been making full tutorials on project shares for 13 weeks. That's a whopping 143 projects, y'all. 143. Can you believe it? And then on top of that, she opened up the collaboration to anyone who wanted to participate by using the hashtag Sandy's 13 Frights Before Halloween 2022. And there have been, I don't even know how many other people who've contributed on that. This is not hyperbole, this is truly epic. And for today's project, I'm super excited to be sharing with you an entirely new binding process that I'd never tried before. A few months ago, I had shown in my craft room tour that I had purchased this book recently by Elisa Golden or Alyssa Golden, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce her name, so I apologize if I've done so incorrectly. It's called Making Handmade Books and I have really been enjoying going through the pages on this um, on this book and seeing all sorts of different methods and different things that I'd never tried before. Some of them I've seen others do, some of them I've done myself, but for the most part they were new to me. For today's project I'm going to be using this binding system here called the Secret Belgian Binding. Now she does go on to explain in here that she had since learned that it was originally created by someone else. And so I'm gonna actually read this portion of the book to you because I feel like it's important to notate that. Um, it says, this book was originally attributed to Heidi Kyle, K-Y-L-E, but we've discovered that Anne Goy, A-N-N-E Goy, G-O-Y, created this structure. She calls it crisscross binding and presented it in 1986. Anne wanted to make a book binding that looked like a Japanese stab binding, but opened flat like this one does. Heidi learned it from a student and they knew only that it was from Belgium and named it Secret Belgian Binding. And so that's where the name came from in this book where they're calling it Secret Belgian Binding. She then goes on to say that Emily Martin, who is a book artist and educator from Iowa, showed it to her and then she went ahead and, and shared it in this book here as well. Now, I wanted to kind of point that out to you because that's sort of how these things happen, right? I always wanna give credit to the people who originated things, but sometimes the people I learned it from aren't necessarily the originators. I find it interesting. This is, I guess, originally called a crisscross binding. In the book, it's called Belgian binding or secret Belgian binding, but um, it may even be known by other names. I don't know, but I love the way this looks. Isn't this awesome? For this little album, I chose not to do any special decoration on the cover. I felt like the paper just spoke for itself. I love this image of these bats. It's too, too cute. And then you open it up and we've got eight signatures that are stitched into the binding. And I'm gonna show you the whole process on how that is done. We've got some little tuck spots here. And I am just super happy with the way this book turned out. Um, the pages turn wonderfully, they open and lay flat. And I really think I'm gonna be doing more of this. I like it a lot. So let's go ahead and get started on the tutorial, folks. To begin, we're gonna start with two pieces of chipboard that measure six and a quarter by four and three quarters, and one piece that measures six and a quarter by one half, and we're gonna wrap these. And I've cut two pieces of cardstock that measure six and three quarters by eight and a quarter to wrap our front and back cover. So that's gonna be two inches larger in length and width than our chipboard. And for the spine, I've got a piece that measures eight and a quarter by one and a half, and that is only one inch wider than the width but two inches longer than the length of our spine. So this is gonna be wrapped all the way around and I've added a half inch to each side to wrap the sides of it and one inch at the top and the bottom. I'm going to begin with wrapping my spine because it is a, a different way of doing it than I've shown before. I'm just wrapping it all the way. I'm wrapping it in the same way you would wrap the front and back covers. It's just that since it's a, only a half of an inch wide, I'm only gonna do a half an inch on the sides because I don't want so much paper to come over. But I am gonna do the one inch at the top and the bottom. So that's gonna perfectly position it so that it's centered on that one and a half inch wide piece of paper. So we're just gonna put some glue on the back here and stick it down. And I'm gonna burnish it really well 
so that if there's any glue that needs to seep out, it will I go along and clean it up. And again, this is all the same way that I I do it, you know, before that you guys have probably seen a million times, but I feel like it's worth going through because this is a little different. Usually if I'm wrapping my front and back covers in this way on the spine, I'm, I'm using, you know, the lay flat method that Tamara did and that includes some wings. This is not that method. So there is a difference here. And so then we're just going to wrap these all the way around, really giving it a firm crease as we fold it over on itself. And once that's been wrapped all the way around, we're gonna open it back up and we're gonna cut out these rectangles on the four corners. So where those creases intersect here on all four corners, we're gonna cut out those rectangles. And then I'm gonna come around and do my little slight miter at the top and the bottom piece here. This, you know, the narrow half inch by one inch wide piece that's overhanging. I'm doing that same sort of slight miter that I usually do. But on these sides, I'm going to give it a bit more of a, a, a dramatic angle there. I'm going to have a more acute angle on the miter. Because these aren't serving as wings in this case. They're going to be wrapped all the way around. So now, you know, the challenge of this one becomes that it's so small. And, you know, oops, I see a little bit of an overhang here. I want to clip off. And when you're working with stuff that's, you know, really small, it can be challenging because you've got, um, you know, you're used to working with something larger. Your tools are sized larger, right? It's just a different, a different thing. So we're going to put the glue against the chipboard just like we always do. Come into the little piece. We're going to stand it up, give it a little wind wiggle, bend it over on itself. Um, in this case, I'm just going to push it up because it's, it's just so small. <laughs> It's just so small. And in fact, after, you know, I made like a little test run of one of these and here I'll, I'll show you. So I made a little test run to kind of see how it works and I really like it a lot. But I started thinking, wouldn't this be cool if this were just a piece of wood, like a, a stained piece of wood? Because it doesn't necessarily have to be chipboard, but I thought that would be really cool if I had, if I had had some time or, you know, I don't know, mostly time. I, Again, we're on week 13. I don't know why I expected anything differently. I, you know, began this at like 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon um, on Sunday. So <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I, if I had been thinking, I would have probably gone out in the garage and cut a piece of wood. And then you wouldn't have to do any of this wrapping. You would just be dealing with a wooden spine. And it could be really cool. You could stain it. You could paint it. You could do some stenciling on it. The possibilities are really endless and I think it would be a really cool effect. So I am just going around here, you know, pulling it tight, making sure that my paper is is taut around the edges and really squeegeeing out any extra glue that may come out, which for me, that's the challenge in working with small stuff is I, um, I always end up with glue seeping out, but that's okay. All right, and so then we'll get the other side here. And the reason I'm doing this one first is I want to stick it under my mat so that it can, um, it can, you know, spend a good amount of time sort of drying flat while we're working on the other ones. I'm going to put them under the mat too, but just this way it will. Uh, this one has a little bit more time. It's so small. I think it has a, a higher tendency to warp. There's not as much surface area. So I just want to make sure that it stays as straight and true as possible. And in fact, in the book, when she's talking about making that Belgian binding, she says to put them in a press to dry. So, which is more of like kind of a book binders tool, but um, I don't have a press. I just put it under my mat and that works for me. All right. So this one is now wrapped, as you can see, and I'm going to go ahead and stick it underneath my mat and we're going to move on to the front and back covers. Now wrapping the front and back covers are identical to how I do it. Usually we're just going to put a one inch spacer at the top and the side. I cut my piece two inches larger in width and height. We're going to apply our glue and stick it down. And then once we've got that positioned, we're going to burnish it really well, making sure that there's, you know, the glue gets spread out as best as possible. I'm going to go around the edges with my bone folder, cleaning up any that may have seeped out. And then I'm just wrapping this in the exact same way. I'm going to go around here and 
burnish the edges from the front side, stand it up to fold it over and really crease those folds on all four sides. Cut out the squares on all four corners, then back the sides and give a slight angle on each corner. So it'll be a total of eight cuts for all four corners. And then using my mitering tool, I'm gonna miter all of the corners. Once mitered, our corners will look like this. And then we're simply gonna glue the sides around to the back by placing glue along the edge of the chipboard, filling in on the remaining cardstock, standing it up, giving it a wiggle, flipping it over, spreading it out, really squeegeeing the glue out from underneath the paper, cleaning it up as we go. Run my bone folder along the edge to square up that edge and repeat on the remaining three sides. And once we've wrapped that, we're gonna slip it underneath our mat and wrap the other one in the exact same way. The collection I'm using for today's project is from Park Lane and it's called Haunted Hollow. It is double-sided and there's 36 sheets in here. So I've gone ahead and pulled out eight different patterns that I want to work with and I've cut them into pieces that measure nine inches wide and six inches tall. So we're gonna get out our scoreboard and we're gonna place it in our scoreboard on the nine inch side and score in half on the nine inch side at four and a half. And we're gonna do that for all eight of them. If you wanted to, you could use book weight paper and you could do several layers on here and create a signature. Because I'm using the heavier pattern paper cardstock, I'm only going to do a single one. And plus, it's the whole purpose of this is just to show you how to do this type of binding. It's a new type of binding for me. So I don't want to overcomplicate it. It can definitely be built up as a signature, you know, more of a standard signature. We've got several pages that are folded in here in kind of like a little booklet type form. But for this purpose, we're not gonna do that. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get to play with one of our new tools here. And so this comes in a book binding kit. I will have it linked in the description notes below. I just bought it from Amazon. It was really cheap, you guys. I know there's probably higher quality versions of all these tools, but so far they've worked great for me. So the book binding kit includes this guide here for your hole punches. It includes a couple different colors of waxed thread for binding, you know, for stitching them together. It includes some needles. It includes an awl. It includes a few different bone folders. There's a whole bunch of stuff that comes with it. And it has worked out really well for me. So I will have that linked in the description notes below. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our papers that are folded and we're gonna place them inside this, you know, this measurement tool, right? I wanna punch six holes in this and I want them to be evenly spaced, but I wanna come down a half inch from the top and from the bottom to begin with. Each one of these holes is a quarter of an inch apart. So I wanna begin my first hole at a half inch from the top and my, my bottom hole a half inch from the bottom. And then I wanna evenly space them out. So I need to space four more in between here. And just to keep me from getting confused here, I'm gonna use my pencil and I'm just gonna accentuate each of these here. So at this second hole I'm gonna, is gonna be my first hole that I punch. And then I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, that's gonna be my second hole and then one, two, three, four, that's gonna be my third hole. One, two, three, four, that's gonna be my fourth hole. One, two, three, four, that's gonna be my fifth hole. And one, two, three, four, that's gonna be my sixth hole, okay? So I'm just gonna take my awl and I'm gonna come into these little holes here and just give it a little punch. So two, three, four, five, and six, just like that. And so this is a pretty handy little tool here. And I've got all my holes lined up here. And then I'm gonna move on to the next set and do the same thing. And just punching all six of my holes as I go down. I'm making sure that it's all the way pu pushed to the top. And I'm just gonna come down and make my punches. Once we've punched all of our holes and you can see they line up perfectly. This is such a great little tool. Um, we're finished with this tool so I can go ahead and put it away. And because they were just like kind of a quick little punch on the holes, I like to come back through here and I found that if I just make them a little larger by pressing that all through a little bit further, 
see how it expands that hole there from the little kind of pin prick mark? I'm gonna go ahead and do that on all of them. I'm, I'm going down about a half an inch on my awl and I'm just gonna do that just to make the holes a little bit larger. And so as you can see, all those holes are lined up perfectly and they're a little bit larger now. It also is showing the white core of the cardstock. It's really sort of accentuating that. And you can leave it like it is, it's not a problem. I'm gonna go ahead and ink these edges just to sort of knock that back a little bit. So I'm just gonna go through and ink these edges really quick. I'm sure you know how to do this, but if you don't, I mean, you just basically, you're just putting ink on the edges. So I'm gonna go through and do all that and I'll be right back. Now that I've sort of knocked back some of that, you know, white cord just a little bit, it's not a lot. And honestly, it's probably not even gonna be seen. I'm, I was more interested in inking the edges of the paper and I think it does look better. I'm gonna go ahead and set these aside for just a second and we're gonna retrieve our, front and back cover from underneath our mat. So in this method, we're not gonna have a chance to cover the inside after we've done the binding on here like we normally would. So I need to cut some pattern paper to cover these pieces here. So I'm gonna cut my pieces from my front and back cover um, for the outside and inside of my front and back cover and a piece for the inside of my spine. I'm not gonna put any pattern paper on the outside of the spine. I feel like the decoration of the binding itself is going to be enough for that. So I'm not going to put anything on there, but I am going to go ahead and cut my pieces for this. And because I recently had a question about this, I'm going to show you how I do this. Our album is six and a quarter inches tall. I have cut some paper that is six and a half inches tall. And the reason being is that I want to be able to trim it down so that I have more accurate cuts. So I'm going to flip all of these over and push it, position it as if this is the you know, outside here, right? And I'm going to lay my piece on here so that I've got a similar reveal all the way around. And I'm just gonna make a little tick mark with my pencil where I want that top to be. Also where I want this to end, which is kind of hard to see because it's on a glossy piece there, but that's okay. So I'm gonna come over here to this mark, go ahead and make that cut. And then I'm gonna trim on my little tick mark here where I want that other, you know, where I want my height to be. And then I'm gonna double check. And that is just about where I want it to be. It looks like I need to trim a little bit more off the width. I'm gonna back that down just a little bit more. Just like that. And so, you know, I'm a big fan of overcutting and then dry fitting and making marks, marks, and then we're just like, you know, cutting it to fit. So that's how I'm going to do for that one. Gosh, you know, I was going to leave that center part. Actually, I think we are going to cut an exterior piece. I just, I like the way this pattern looks on here. So let's go ahead and match that. Let's make this cut here and go ahead and cut the full length this time on my height. And then this one is going to be fairly scant. Let's see, let's bring it to here. I just think these bats are pretty great. So I'd like to get a continued pattern if at all possible, or a continuous pattern, I should say, if at all possible. Yep, that's gonna work. And then the remaining one here, let's go ahead and lay it down. And again, I could just go ahead and back this off an eighth of an inch, because it's basically an eighth of an inch less than the width and the height. But, you know, just to make sure, sometimes when you wrap things, they're not quite as straight. You just, you know, I just think you get a more accurate um, and more finished look when you do that. This paper is so heavily patterned, I keep losing my mark on it. Okay, there it is. I wasn't sure what was the pattern and what was my mark. Oh, maybe a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so that's gonna look great. I'm gonna go ahead and ink these edges and glue them down and I'm gonna cut the interior pieces in the same way. All right, now I have uh, put some pattern paper on my inside covers 
as well as on my outside covers of my album. And I think it looks really cute. <laughs> and the next step is to make a couple marks so that we know where to punch our holes. And I don't wanna do it from the front side, I'm gonna do it from the inside. So I'm gonna kind of flip these over and I'm trying to keep these as much in alignment as possible so that I don't accidentally get something in upside down. I'm happy so. that I've done a continuous pattern because that's a way for me to double check, you know, if the if if this were in the wrong way, it's going to show here on the pattern. So I know that my spine needs to be positioned this way. So the next step is to take one of our pages that we've punched our punched our holes with, right? And to go ahead and create like a use that as a template for the holes that need to be punched on our covers. And how I'm going to do that is I am going to on either side of the of the covers, the sides closest to the spine, I'm going to make a mark that is three eighths of an inch in from the edge of the chipboard from the edge of our cover piece here. So I'm lining this up at three eighths of an inch. And I'm just going to take my pencil and I'm going to draw a line right along there. Okay, so just like that. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to come to the three eighths of an inch mark from the edge of my chipboard. So I've got my little line here on my edge of my chipboard and I'm gonna make another pencil mark there. And then I'm gonna open up one of our, you know, one of our pieces here that we've got. And in fact, this is why I wanted those holes to be larger. I thought I punched them all through, but apparently I missed a few. <laughs> um, because I wanna be able to see them a little bit better. The holes are plenty large enough for running our thread through with our needle, but I'm making them just a little bit larger here for this case so that I can see them. And I'm gonna line this up on that pencil mark that I had here. So I've got the top of my fold and the bottom of my fold lined up on my pencil mark. And once I've got it positioned where I want it to be, you know, so if I got an even reveal top and bottom for my page here, I'm just gonna take my pencil and in each of these holes, I'm gonna make a mark. Just kind of coming in and pressing in through that hole so that I've got a pencil mark here on each of these spots. I've got there, there. I'm kind of off of my line here just ever so slightly. There and there. Okay. And now I'm going to take my all. And actually I didn't need to make the mark on the second one. I just realized because I'm going to line them up together to punch them through again. But you know, hey, it's a reference mark, right? So I'm going to take my all and I'm just going to punch through this. I'm twisting it. And as you can see, I twisted it right through there. Okay. So I'm gonna put my awl on the next mark and I'm just gonna twist it and press it through. Okay, get on my third mark here. Twisting as I am applying even pressure through. Fourth mark, same thing. And then fifth and sixth. Just be careful not to have your fingers behind that. You don't want to prick your finger with the awl. I'm holding my fingers on the edge and, you know, giving light and just kind of consistent pressure going through as I'm twisting it. Okay, so once we've got those holes in place, now we need to take it and we need to hold it so that they are, the insides are facing each other, okay? and line them up so that the insides are facing each other. And on this step, I'm just gonna take a couple of binder clips and hold it in place because as I'm wiggling that all through, I don't want it to shift. I wanna be able to keep my holes lined up. So I'm gonna go through in each one of these spots here, I'm gonna press through the underneath side and create a corresponding hole that's gonna come through. And now we've got our, uh, our holes punched here and they're in alignment with each other. And I'm kind of glad I did make that line because I was worried that maybe it had wiggled too much, but it's just sort of confirmation that it's it's on the same line. So that's good. It makes me feel a little better. So now we are ready to move on to the interesting part, right? This is the really fun part. We're gonna take a length of this uh, waxed twine. Now this, like I said, it came with the book binding kit. So it's already prepared and it's specialty made for book binding. 
but I don't see why you couldn't just, you know, use a heavier weight upholstery thread and run it through some beeswax. So there's, you know, there's ways of waxing your thread, but this is a wax twine. It's really sturdy and strong and it's very waxy. I mean, it is, it's definitely very waxy. I can bend it, it's gonna keep its shape type thing. I'm gonna cut a length that is about five feet long, which is really long, but I wanna make sure I've got enough here. I think I probably am only gonna need about four feet but I haven't done this before, so I'm gonna go for five feet just to you know, be extra safe. There is a risk of when you cut something too long, you're kind of fighting <laughs> the thread, but you know, I would just rather it be too long than too short because I need to do this in a continuous run. And then I'm gonna take out one of these needles that came with the book binding kit, and they're just a really heavy duty honestly very similar to an upholstery needle, just not the curved upholstery needles, you know, but um, it's just nice that they came with it. I was very impressed with this kit, you know, it was relatively inexpensive and, and you get a lot of tools included, so that was kind of nice. I had been reading this book for a few months and wanting to make all sorts of of the things in the book, but they all required these tools. I finally broke down and just bought them. So we're going to begin on the lower right side of this hole here. And we're going to come from the inside of the book, right? So we're on the inside back cover here on the lower right hand side of our holes. And we're going to go down through that and really pull it all the way through here. And I'm going to leave a tail that is, oh, let's say, I don't know, like four inches long. And I'm actually gonna take a piece of my mince tape and just tape it in place while I'm kind of working everything else in place. That way I know it's not gonna move, it's not gonna get too short on me, I'm just gonna do that, okay? And then this is pretty interesting what you do. Um, the first thing I wanna do though is I wanna clamp these together so they're not wiggling out of space. And once we get them going, I don't think we'll need them, but just to begin, let's just come across all of them. We'll straighten them out here in a second. Oops. Just holding it in place for me, right? I just don't want it to wiggle too much. Okay, so we came through to the, to the front side here, okay? And then this one, you're really supposed to take the needle up through here, but you don't need to. We're just gonna come back up through the space between the spine and the back cover, okay? So I brought the needle out from the inside and in from the outside between the spine and the back cover. I'm gonna go back out then like this. I'm kind of, I'm weaving it around here, okay? So I'm gonna go back out to the outside of the front cover between the spine and the front cover this time. Okay, kind of holding this into place. And then we're gonna come back in through this hole. So this hole here, we are gonna come back in through. Just like this, okay? And I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna have to tighten them up here in a little bit, but for now, this is fine. Uh, they keep wiggling on me, there we go. Okay, so now I've come back in through this hole here, right? Now I'm gonna come back down and we're gonna come between the front cover and the spine to go out and then between the spine and the back cover to come back in. So now I've woven it around here so I've got another string here looping over the back cover or looking at look looping over the outside of the spine okay and now once this one has come up here i'm actually going to tie a knot between the piece that we started and kind of where we are and i just i think that it's good placement to have this knot here on the inside of the back cover it's a little bit out of the way there we go and i'm just going to tie a square knot on this this looped around. Really tight little square knot there. There we go, okay? And I'm gonna leave the tail for now because I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it yet, but just for now, I'm gonna leave it sitting there like that. Okay, 
So now that we've got that in place, now we're going to go back out through the same hole that we began in. And our, it's a little bit sturdier now, so I it's not wiggling quite as much. Now I get this. So this first, you know, few little stitches there, the wrapping around of that spine piece, it's a little wonky, but now it's a little it's a little sturdier. Okay. So now we've got this coming back out through here. We're going to come back in between the spine and the back cover, back out between the spine and the front cover. I'm not poking any holes on there. We're just kind of weaving in between the spine and the cup in the front and back cover and back in through this hole here on the back or on the, it's actually the outside of the front cover. Okay. So what this looks like then is we have one stitch across on the front cover, two across the spine, and one across the back cover, and that's all from the inside of the book. And on the outside of the book, it's the opposite. We have the two stitches across the front and back cover, and one stitch that goes across the spine, okay? And so now we've got our, our thread is coming up through the bottom hole of the front, at the inside of the front cover, okay? And we're gonna go up, just do a little running stitch straight up to the second hole from the inside of the front cover, okay? And we're gonna begin the same sort of process. Now we're gonna begin our series of stitching here. So I'm gonna slip my needle between the front cover and the spine. And in the book, it says to line this up where they're like, you know, a chipboard with the cross or away from each other. I have found that just putting the needle in and out is gonna naturally give it the spacing I need. So I'm not even trying to space it. I'm trying to keep it as close together as possible. The stitching, as you can tell, is gonna create spacing on its own. So we've come back in through the space between the front cover and the spine. And then we're gonna go back out through the space between the spine and the back cover, just like this, and then come back in through that second hole on the back cover. And I'm, I'm numbering my holes from the bottom to top, so I'm in the second hole from the bottom. Bringing that through, just like that. I wanna give it a nice little tug, try to keep it tight. And then we're gonna go back in through the space between the back cover and the spine, or back out between the space between the back cover and the spine, we're gonna come in between the space between the spine and the front cover. We're gonna go out through the second hole on the front cover. Kind of get it through here, okay? Just like that. And then we're gonna come in the space between the front cover and the spine, again, a second time. Out in the space between the spine and the back cover, a second time. And back in through the second hole on the back cover. Get this up here, there we go, just like that. I'm gonna give it a nice little tug, make sure that we're lined up right. So now we are, we're in We've come inside through the second hole on the back cover. We're gonna go out through the third hole on the back cover. We're gonna take another little running stitch up here. Out through the third hole on the back cover. In through the space between the spine and the back cover. Out through the space between the spine and the front cover. Just like that. Give it a tug in through the third hole on the front cover, out through the space between the front cover and the spine, in through the space between the spine and the back cover, out through the third hole on the back cover, just like that, in through the space between the back cover and the spine, 
out through the space between the spine and the front cover and in through that third hole on the front cover. So you can kind of see this is our pattern that we're doing here. And the stitching is looking like this. So again, on the front, we've got a single stitch that goes across the spine and two stitches on either side that are showing. On the inside cover, we've got a single stitch on either side of the spine that's showing and two stitches across the spine. And then this alternating running stitch, we're getting ready to make a third running stitch up here. We're gonna go out through the fourth hole on the front cover, just like that. And I'm gonna have to pull these back so they're not in the way. And then we're gonna come in through the space between the front cover and the spine, out through the space between the spine and the back cover, just like that, in through the fourth hole on the back, one, two, three, fourth hole on the back, we're gonna come in, out through the space between the back cover and the spine, in through the space between the front cover, or between the spine and the front cover, out through the fourth hole on the front cover, wiggle that through, in through the space between the front cover and the spine again, Give that a little tug. Out through the spine and the back cover space. And we're gonna finish the stitch by going in through the fourth hole on the back cover. Just like that, okay? So we finished off the fourth row of stitching here, of these four rows of stitching, by coming in through the fourth hole on the back cover. We're gonna take a running stitch up to that fifth hole on the back cover and stitch out. And then we're gonna stitch in through the space between the back cover and the spine, out through the space between the front cover and the spine, in through the fifth hole on the front cover. Okay, I do feel like I need to tug this a little bit. There we go. Out through the space between the front cover and the spine. In through the space between the spine and the back cover. And out through the fifth hole on the back cover. Okay. Wiggle it, pull it out. Okay. And then this is the last pass for this fifth row of stitching. We're going to come in through the space between the back cover and the spine out through the space between the spine and the front cover and in through that fifth hole on the front cover just like that okay and now we can take this off i think what i'm going to do is actually put one on the bottom to hold it straight you know to hold it flat but keep it out of my way that works that's what i should have done is just flipped it around that's nice okay so now we're gonna take our, we finished off our fifth row of stitches by coming in through the fifth hole on the front cover. Now we're gonna take a running stitch up to that sixth hole on the front cover and pull it to the back. I'm gonna pull it out. And then we're gonna come in through the space between the front cover and the spine, out through the space between the spine and the back cover. And this, you know, I can kind of weave it in and out at this point, I don't have to necessarily use my needle. And then we're gonna come in through that sixth hole on the back cover, okay? Pull this on through, there we go. Out through the space between the back cover and the spine. In through the space between the front cover and the spine. And out through that sixth hole on the front cover. And then this is the last bit. We're gonna come in through the space between the front cover and the spine, out through the space between the spine and the back cover, and in through the sixth hole on the back cover. Just like that. Okay, go ahead and take this off. 
There we go. And now we've got this all stitched together. It looks so cool. I really like it. And then we just simply need to tie this off um, by tying it kind of to itself here. So um, we're going to tie this in a square knot. this there we go and I kind of I left this one long because I think what I want to do is I actually want to join the two and tie them again like this rather than having them kind of hanging loose and in order to do that um let's see I want to feed it underneath all of the stitching and my stitches are really tight. They're gonna loosen up some as we start attaching um, our signatures though. So I, I want them to be pretty tight at this point. They are gonna loosen up all the way through. There we go. And now let's just tie these. That way we've got, um, we don't have any ends necessarily hanging out, right? Or if we do, they're on the bottom of this back side here. Trim our tails, just like that. Okay, so I had, uh, you know, like 19 inches left over, <laughs> but I feel better about that. I would have rather had that than to have had too little. So I think it worked out pretty well. And you know, if I hadn't run that all the way through, I would have had even more um, left over, but I think that that's a good way to finish it. And look at the binding, you guys. Isn't that cool? I think it's super cool. And now all we've got to do is stitch in our signatures into the spine. Now to stitch the signatures in the spine, you can use one of two different needles. You can use a curved upholstery needle, which is really kind of nice. It gets through there. I, um, I like these for a lot of reasons. I've had this, you know, for a long time because I've had to do upholstery repairs. I have small kids. If you know, you know, <laughs> I've had to repair upholstery. Um, and they're, they're really great. I don't know that it's needed for this. Now I may get to a point where I might want to switch to it. This is the first time I've made this. So we'll see, but I'm going to set this aside for now. I'm going to use the same needle that I use to stitch our spine together with. And, um, oh, I'm just realizing I probably want to erase some of these pencil marks too while I can. So I probably should have done it before I started stitching. It would have been easier to get to them, but that's okay. We can get in here and get them cleaned up. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to use the same needle that I used before, but the thread that I'm going to use is different. I'm actually going to use this thread here, which is upholstery thread. Now in the instructions in the book that I was reading, and I've, I've kind of modified this, so I'm not really going by that. She says to use re regular book binding thread or button thread. And I feel like upholstery thread is sort of an in-between of those two. It's a really nice sturdy thread, but it's not very bulky. And so this is what I'm going to use today. I'm going to cut a length of this that's I don't know, let's say, let's go back to five feet. I feel like five feet's long enough for anything, <laughs> but not so long that I can't manage it. And so then whatever I end up with left over, I'll, I'll just cut off and discard, right? So let me go ahead and cut my ribbon, or my, uh, my ribbon, cut my thread here. <laughs> and then we're gonna thread our needle. And again, I'm using the straight needle, but I may end up switching to the curved needle. I don't know yet. And I've got all my signatures lined up here. Um, so that I, you know, know which ones I'm going to use. I'm going to start with the back one. Okay. And I'm going to lay it down here. I'm going to open it up and beginning from the bottom of the outside. So from the mountain fold on the bottom, I'm going to come in with my thread and I'm going to leave about a four inch tail again. And I'm going to do the same thing I did before where I'm just sort of taping it down to the back just to keep it from moving. There we go. So I've come in through the bottom hole, okay? And then I'm gonna go out through the second hole. And these can be more traditional signatures. You could stack up paper, you know, if you had book weight paper, you could stack it up. I'm just using heavier cardstock, so I didn't. And this is just how I'm doing it, but. And then I'm gonna come underneath these two stitches here on the spine. So I'm gonna come back through that and that's what's gonna catch it. And then I'm also gonna come through these next two 
just like this. Yeah, I think I curved. Okay, let me switch to that curved needle. Maybe this will be better. Let's try that. Okay, now I'm gonna come back through these um, next two. And as you can see, like there's a lot of kind of going in and out of these stitches and that's what's gonna sort of loosen them up some. I'm making sure that I'm not actually getting into the, the thread. I'm just going under the thread, all right? Okay, so I went in through the bottom hole here to the inside. You can see this stitch right here, okay? I came out through the second hole and I grabbed the first set of stitches that crossed the spine and the second set of stitches that crossed the spine. And now I'm gonna go back in through the third hole, just like this, okay? and out through the fourth hole. I wish it wasn't quite as curved of a needle and maybe there's a book binding needle that's only slightly curved. This is an upholstery needle, so I don't know. And then I'm gonna catch this two rows of stitches that are on, that are next to this fourth hole, okay? And it's just sliding underneath them. I'm not going through them, right? I'm sliding it underneath them and I'm gonna go through the next two rows of stitches that cross the spine that are next to the fifth hole. That one I kind of caught the, there we go. Make sure I'm not going through the stitch or through the, the thread. Gonna come back in through that fifth hole out through the sixth hole Just like this. And then at this point, I want to position it towards the back of the spine and pull it really tight. And then I'm gonna come through the two rows of stitches on the spine, okay? Just to sort of catch it there, all right? And now we're gonna move on to the next one. I'm gonna deal with tying this one off at the end. So I'm just gonna leave my, my end of my thread there. And I may even wanna like tighten this up some at that point. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it, um, leave it taped down here, okay? So now we're gonna grab our next one and lay it down. And I'm gonna go the opposite direction now. Now I'm gonna come in through the sixth hole Actually, no. And so now before I go in through that sixth hole, I think what I wanna do is I want this um, thread to be at the top of them. So I'm gonna kind of split the difference. If you can see here, I'm gone between those two, those two here, okay? And I'm gonna come in through the sixth hole and this isn't exactly how it is in the book. I'm, I'm kind of adapting it just a little bit for the way my brain works. Uh, your brain may work differently and you may wanna do this differently and that is okay. And I'm gonna go out through the fifth hole, just like that. And then I'm gonna catch this next two sets of two. So here's the first set of two that are by the fifth hole just like that. And here's the next two threads here by the fourth hole. Oops, there we go, just like that. And now I'm gonna come in through the fourth hole on my the second signature that I'm putting in, but it's the second from the back because I'm starting at the back. Just like this. I'm gonna Pull that tight so that it's sitting where it's supposed to be. And then I'm gonna come out through the third hole. Just like that. And I'm gonna catch the next two sets of two. Right, so I'm just gonna go underneath 
those two threads there and I'm going to go underneath the two threads by the second hole before then bringing it into the second hole. What do we have here? I've got a thread that needs to be tightened up. Oh, it's on this one. I'll tighten that one up later. Okay, and so then I'm going to come back in through the second hole. Just like that. And out through the first hole. I can find it. I see it, but it's not. There we go. Go out through the first hole. And I just realized that this paper may be upside down, but that's okay. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe not, though. This tree looks like it's right side up. I think as you're looking at the perspective is standing in a forest looking up through the trees, right? And then I'm going to come... Um, Let's see. Yeah, let's go down through these two, though, so I don't have to do that weird thing I did at the top. So we'll go down through the, the two that go across the spine. Okay. And now we'll get our next page, open it up. And I'm going to come in through the first hole. So this is the same patterns that we did for the first page. The second page was in reverse because we were coming down, you know, from the from the top to the bottom. This one we're going from the bottom to the top. So we're going to come in through that first hole, just like that, out through the second hole, pull it nice and tight, try to keep it in place here. I think the tighter you pull it, the better. We're going to go underneath the first two sets of strings that cross the spine and underneath the second two sets of strings that cross the spine before going in through, or the, actually it's the third set. We're going underneath the second two, the second set of two strings and underneath the third set of two strings before going into that third hole, just like that. And I go out through the fourth hole underneath the two strings at the fourth hole junction, underneath, oh, just like that, underneath the two strings at the fifth hole junction, I keep catching it on the corner of the book, <laughs> before going back in through that fifth hole, just like that. Pull this tight. And then we're going to go out through the sixth hole. Right about there. I'm not sure that inking those holes helped at all. Because every time I go in and out, it seems like it's still showing more of the white. And then on this one, we're going to come underneath the two sets at the top of that sixth hole junction. So that we're ending at the top here. Okay. And now let's get our other page and put it in. And we're going to come in through the sixth hole. Pulling it all the way. Out through the fifth hole. Yeah, that's going to be good. Okay, and then we're going to go underneath the two sets that are at the fifth hole junction, the two sets of strings that cross the spine at the fifth hole junction, and we're going to go underneath the two sets of strings that cross the spine at the fourth hole junction. Now, in the directions, she didn't have you going through both of these, but I feel like it just gives a lot more structure than having it go through like every other one like that. I just think it's a little bit stronger. But it's probably not necessary, and you guys are welcome to make it however you want to make it <laughs> before going into that fourth hole, okay? And then we're going to come out through the third hole. We're going to go underneath the two 
threads that cross at the third hole junction across the spine. Oh, I gotta rethread my needle, it came out. Underneath the two threads that cross the second hole junction at the spine, before going into the second hole. Just like that. Yeah, I do think the curved needle is easier. So, you know, <laughs> you learn and then you adapt, right? And then we're gonna go out through the first hole. Okay. And then I'm gonna come down through those first two strings that cross at the first hole junction so that my thread ends at, you know, underneath those strings, okay? Now we're gonna get our next page. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna walk through one more and then I'll do the rest of them and, and meet you up when I'm done. So we're gonna come, cause this is basically the same way we're gonna start at the beginning. So we'll do this one last time and then we'll, we'll move on. <laughs> I'm gonna come in through that first hole from the mountain part of the fold to the inside. That's my in through the first hole. I'm gonna come out through the second hole. There we go. Whoops. I'm gonna come under the first two sets of thread that cross the spine at the second hole. I'm gonna come under the second two sets of threads that cross the spine at the third hole before going into the third hole. Just like that. Come out through the fourth hole. Go underneath the first two sets of thread that cross the spine at the fourth hole. Go underneath the two sets of thread that cross the spine at the fifth hole before going in through the fifth hole. Come out through the sixth hole. And go underneath the first two sets of thread there that are lined up at the sixth hole. Okay, now I'm gonna finish up with these last few and I will be right back before we kind of tie the whole thing together. All right, it is finished and is this just the cutest thing you've ever seen? I love how it opens up, it lays flat. I really like the detail of the binding. I think it came together really great. Now what I did was I went ahead and tied off that last string, I went ahead and brought it back through and tied there. And then I attached, you know, a piece of ephemera over it. I attached, I made this like a little pocket here and I went ahead and just sort of ran that through there. Just, you know, to make sure it's not, number one, it's not flopping around and number two, it's just not gonna have a chance of coming untied there like that. I think that turned out really great. I did the same thing on the back piece here, that little thread that we had taped down with some of the mint tape. I went ahead and tied it off onto itself and ran it underneath one of these little bits of ephemera that I glued down. So I think it turned out super cute. Let's do a quick walkthrough. Again, this binding system is um, Secret Belgian Binding. And so that's what it's titled in this book here which is where I found it, the author of this book, who is Elisa Golden, or Alyssa, I'm not sure, I may be pronouncing that wrong. Let me know in the comments below if you know. I started with her tutorial, went through it, made some modifications because she's using book weight paper and I'm using scrapbook paper. So I couldn't do the folded pocket pages that she did. Uh, the pa paper was just too thick for that. But I love the way this turned out. I went ahead and added some tuck spots here, you know, with the ephemera, made a couple little cards that can tuck into places. And as you go through it, like I said, I've got a little pocket on here that says poison. I used the entire sheet of ephemera except for one piece, and that was this one here that says sweet and spicy pickled wing of bat for all your spells and potion needs. And I wanted to use it, but it was just, it was too large to fit on any of the pages. So I'll save that for something else, maybe a card or something. It would be kind of cool to put it with maybe a, a gift of some, you know, pickled bat wings. <laughs> 
This one says cobweb powder dry to the bone. Um, let's see this page over here. We've got the spiders. This one says magic potions, freshly brewed potions and elixirs. And I'm just going through and putting in the inserts that I made as we kind of walk through this. I think this turned out so cute. It's oil of snake, shake well, miracle elixir. <laughs> this is so fun. Beware of giant spiders. And these pages, they, they turn easily, they lay flat. I'm really impressed with this. I think I'm gonna be using this quite a bit more. It's a really fun little binding system. And it was a fun thing to play with here for this, this last, you know, 13 frights before Halloween. We're on week 13, folks. So this one says, happy Halloween to and to all a good fright. We've got the hair of the moth. And again, this is where I sort of hid that string that was hanging out. And I probably could have, put this underneath here. I'm just leaving it like it is. In fact, let's trim it down just a little bit more because it is peeking out through the bottom. Oh, I don't mind that one so much, the bottom of the book, but that's just fine. And then on this last one here, it just says poison used with caution. We'll stick another little insert in there. And that concludes our book. And it concludes Sandy's 13 Frights Before Halloween 2022. Y'all, this has been epic. All of the other contributors have made the most amazing projects and some of us are going to be doing a recap next week. So I know Sandy said she's going to go through and kind of recap on all the projects she made next week and I've decided I'm going to do the same thing and a few others have as well. Some people are doing a recap today. Um, it just depends on their schedules and what they're able to do but this was so fun. I have enjoyed every moment of it. I have gone out of my comfort zone. I have learned new things like this. I have tried new things like the lanterns and some of the other projects that I've done. And this has been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, Sandy. I am so grateful to have been able to participate in this and to learn and grow from and with all of these other amazing contributors and designers. This has just been Wow, I'm I'm just, I don't even have words. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you so much. And thank you to all of the other contributors and to all of you who decided to join in as you felt so inspired and using that hashtag Sandy's 13 Frights before Halloween 2022. It's not too late to do that. If you feel inspired by any of the projects you've seen this week or previous weeks or just something you wanna share with the rest of us, please do so and make sure you use that hashtag so that we can locate your projects and celebrate with you. I, for one, have had an absolute ball. <laughs> this has just been such a treat. All right, y'all, that's what I've got for you today. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I hope you're being kind to yourselves and I hope you're finding joy in your journey. Thanks so much, everyone. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you.